People deluded, I'm back again. Thank you very much for tuning back in. Got a couple of things to speak about. You lot know me, I like to speak for no reason all the time. So let's just crack into it, wasting time. Um, first and foremost, I would say congratulations to Daniel Ballard, our young under 23 defender who you've seen training with the first team. I'm not actually praising the 20 year old for training with the first team, I'm praising him because he's been out for a number of months now with a serious injury and he's working his way back to full fitness. And I really, I think it sucks for him because I think in terms of being an honest professional, hard working, I did think he was one of the most underrated centre halves at the team. I don't know if he has the potential to break into the first team, I think that's a tough ask. But what I do know is that he played very good at 23's level. If he was looking at centre halves at a point to get a chance, I know Medley gets all the plaudits and is the one mainly known. But Ballard was one of them putting in a shift. And this season, he should have felt, yeah, I can make something of my career in that he was he went out on loan um, and he got injured very early into his loan spell um, after playing a good game a couple of good games for his team there did he go Swindon I can't even remember pretty sure it's Swindon and he was on the you know he's on the lips of of senior island call-ups and things like that so just in terms of increasing your stature in football and it was plucked from him but it's lovely to see he's fit again probably not going to go out on loan this season the main thing is rehabilitation playing with the 23s and going out on loan next season. So congratulations to Daniel Ballard for getting fit again. Now, this vid this this next topic kind of came off me at the Emirates. I was at the Emirates. You don't know me, I love young players, but football is part of it. I don't begrudge players for leaving. I don't begrudge teams for getting rid of players. Martinelli came into the club. We had that signing from early and has given us something, not just on the left, but long term up front. Saka's been doing his thing more so at left back this of recent, but left back, left wing, he's done his thing. <clears throat> so you've had one player from Hayland, you've had one young player sourced in, you've also got Nelson. Why I mention this is because I was looking around, I was like, what if we had Xavier Amici? What if Javi Amici was here? Would he would he play? What would he be feeling? And I think I think Arteta would like him, and I think he's got a lot of development to do. I do think he's behind Reese Nelson, Saka, Martinelli in terms of strength, in terms of decision making, in t in terms of a lot. But I believe in Amici, and I think he could have given us something on the left and the right long term. I'm not criticising it because at the same time the club must have been looking at it as, as that Amici and Saka are neck and neck. If Amici wants to leave, we've got Saka, Martinelli is coming in, Pepe is older than them, but we've got Pepe and Nelson, and they're all four of these players are ahead of Amici. So in hindsight, we're we're cool with that. We sell him 2.5 million sell on clause as well as they got that. It's a decent thing, and I mean I don't know how much it costs to run the academy, but to get it's not the biggest of funds, but to get 2.5 million for a player who had no intention of signing a new deal and and a sell on free, it's not the big, it's not the end of the world. Um, he went to Hamburg and again, many people will say, oh, look, Saka's playing, Martinelli playing, Eddie playing, Joe here. Could Amici have been part of that? Because Amici was behind Saka, but it was one of them, him and Saka, give or take, seemed to be the next ones up. You remember tri both travelling with the Europa League um, squad. He wanted to leave for whatever reason. Uh, um, I don't think he can be grudged for that, for trying to change his destiny. He decided to leave. And obviously it's easy to look in hindsight like he's not playing at Hamburg. I think he's made five appearances max. Last time I checked it was two. I had to keep checking transfer mark to prove this ain't was. Um, he's went to Hamburg and he's not exactly playing. He's not in the first team. Apparently there was talk of going on loan in January to a couple of championship clubs which didn't materialise. Apparently there's question marks over if he's robust enough currently. So if he's strong enough, his decision making and does he use his dribbling and whatnot to the best of his abilities. So what I get from that is clearly he's got to learn to think quicker. He's probably got to get stronger. But for me, it's goals and assists. He's got to learn to think better in the final third. Um, and that's going to happen. He's obviously going to be off the pace because this, this is actually his first full season as in a senior environment. He joined, um, in fact, no, I'm lying. He's been there, what, this is his second season. So he's not going to be the most experienced of lads. And it's easy to say, yeah, he could have stayed at Arsenal. But let's just say he never got a chance. Let's just say... Martinelli's in front of him, Saka is in front of him, Pepe and whatnot is in front of him. Um, Arteta might have liked him, but let's say the flip side. Let's just say he didn't get a look in. He was training under 23s, playing under 23s, um, training occasionally with the first team. Would it be beneficial to him? Only he could answer you that. And I'd say it wouldn't because at the end of the day, he's not playing at Hamburg to the point where 
He's had to play for the reserves sometimes for match fitness and there's even been question marks with his performances then. But he's immediately in a first-team environment at Hamburg. He's that first-team player at Hamburg that has to keep fitness playing with under-23s. But he's in the first-team environment. He were not official first-team at Arsenal, so he'd still be 23s. Um, so it's a difficult one. Obviously, when you look at it with a lazy eye, you can say, yeah, he might have got chances if you stayed. But I think he, in hindsight, I think I like that. It's, I would have loved him to stay. But it's lovely that he was proactive to go and seek and better his future and try and seize his destiny rather than waiting an opportunity. And he's got to ask himself, if you stayed at Arsenal, would you be a better player? Maybe, yes. I doubt it because you, would you have got the first team minutes that potentially Saka and now Martinelli is, is playing? You've got to remember, you've got it's not just Nelson, Pepe... Um, Saka and Martinelli fighting on the positions for the flanks. There's also um, Aubameyang, as you know, on the left-hand side, which isn't a new thing. So there was a lot of game time, people. Um, there's still a lot of improvement to. There's still a lot of improvement to be done. But as long as he can ask himself, "Am I a better player than when I left Arsenal?" I'd say yes because he could have played 23. You're one of the first names on the team sheet. You're hoping for a first team appearance or to be involved in the cup games. Or you go in an environment where it's competitive for him, where nobody cares that it's a Michi with this youth talent and Bayern Munich, what did they and all these things. They just see, are you the best player to start on a match day? No? Okay, prove yourself in training. So he's in that environment, in that first team environment, where men are, men are hungry generally people. Um, so it is easy to say um, that, he, that he should have left, but it is a decent one, man. Also probably got a better contract being there as well. Um, his words though, and this wasn't recent, but he said, I am very, I'm very patient. Of course I want to play. Of course when I'm not in the team, I'm sad. But I'm trying to impress the coach in training. I would sign immediately. I would immediately sign a contract with Hamburg again. So he's got no regrets. And that's what he should because, you know, he's probably in, away from football. A new, a new culture, a new training and all of these sort of things that comes with being in a new country. Um, he's bound to have learned a lot. For me, if he needs to get a bit stronger, but mainly it's about decision making. His decision making isn't quite to the level of Saka and Martinelli, in my opinion. He's not as calculated. He needs to play with his head up, but that lad has a lot of potential. And I'm not here to say he can be world class and all of this West, but I do believe Amici can be a good player short and long term and have a good career as a senior pro people. But it's all down to him um, if he wants to do that. Um, Apparently, people, Arsenal, Arsenal and Spurs are interested in Cuenca um, and apparently are, are, are very interested and are watching the Guitafe's midfielder's development. You know he can play left wing, you know he can play left back. He's obviously Spanish. I, I mean, these are the reasons for us being linked, but I'd like to think we're kind of stopped at left back. If Collagen actually leaves, I can see us bringing in another man because he's contracted until 2022, but I'm not too sure. Um, on that note of, of these sort of things, people, and I believe I saw something before I forget, um, apparently, according to French football, Siad Be Be Berama, you lot know the um, Brentford lad, 24-year-old, I can never say his name. Apparently, he's caught the eye of many Arsenal ex-players and these players have allegedly, you know, put, this, put the word into Arsenal that we should sign him. That doesn't mean we're going to sign him. I mean, it could be Perez. Perez is always at training. He could have said, oh, Teddy, you got to sign this guy. The board are not going to... The board are obviously going to listen to recommendations from people, but they're not going to be swayed by people saying who to sign and sign not. So it's not really a story, but it's the latest link of, of um, Benarama to Bre um, from Brentford to Arsenal. And what was his last game? His last game, he had a better second half, but he was a bit slow. But I would give him a chance, man. If it doesn't work out, apparently they want 15 million. If it doesn't work out, you'd imagine you can make that back. But I think he's got enough ability to, to have a decent career, man. I don't how how far he could go in the league depends on him. But I think he's a, a very decent a very decent player, man. If I'm completely honest with you guys. Um so yeah, I believe that's that in terms of the transfer crap I've been seeing. Um away away from that though, people. Um away from that. And I wanted to look at our, our Champions League chances. Um apparently Wenger believes we can get Champions League. Um he said They've all got a chance because it looks like the top three teams have moved away from the rest of the league. The rest of the teams, the bottom of the league, have moved up. The top six have dropped their level. The problem is, after Sunday, it's 27 games and 33 points to go for. If you win, you got to 37. And if you make it another 22 or 25, you have a chance. They've all got a chance because it looks like the top three are away from, from the rest of the league. And the rest of the league and teams have moved up. And some teams in the top six have dropped their level. Specifically, I mean, Chelsea, people didn't have much expectations, but they're running away with fourth. They've hit a bit of a blip. 
United are a long way from being Manchester United, the same way for Arsenal. Spurs, definitely since Pochettino was in charge for the last couple of years, have been at their lowest point um, and, and whatnot. So he's probably indirecting them teams. He said, if we have 26 games, after tomorrow's game, we have 33 points to go for. If you make it 22 to 25, you have a chance, which I've had to repeat people. Obviously, Arsenal's current total of 30, 34 points from 26 is a points per game ratio of 1.3. While Wenger's target of 25 points from 11 games would be a ratio of 2 to 3 and 22 points would make it a ratio of 2 allegedly. Now, if we can get it, we can get it. But looking at it, people, and I was trying to just look at our next games and I would be lying if I, if I said I could guesstimate the results, people. But I've tried. Looking at it, we've, got, we've still got to go to Brighton, welcome West Ham, go to Southampton, welcome Norwich, welcome Leicester. Go to Spurs, league champions, champions elect Liverpool have to visit our place. Villa. Now, Villa, Norwich, Watford, and in no order, we've got to go and play these sides. And you've got to be careful. Anything from March to May, teams that are fighting relegation, West Ham as well, you see an uptake in performance. When your backs are against the wall, you either stand up and fight or you curl into a ball. So we've got to be careful. Don't just look at the teams and assume we can win. Um, having a guesstimate, I'm never confident bright in a way, but I've put a win. Southampton away, I'm never confident, but I've put a draw. I think we'll win on Saturday against West Ham again. I don't want to look stupid, but that's just my guess. Um, I think we've lost against Liverpool, hopefully to be wrong, and someone ends that unbeaten run. Villa away, I reckon we'll win, but it won't be easy. Last game of the season against Watford, we'll win. I think we'll lose to Leicester when we play them. Spurs, I, ha I can't not say anything other than a W, so it's all to play for. And it's down to the players to go out there and do their thing, people. Um... In relation to Mkhitaryan, you've seen a lot of reports that Forsaka and Roma want to make not just his loan, but also Smallin's permanent. And he's played quite coy. Mkhitaryan himself has said, um, well, the Roma coach has said, let's see. He's a player with great decisions on the pitch, and I would also like to keep Mickey in our team. But Mkhitaryan said, it's too early to say if I'll stay here or not. There are still three months left. I like everything here, the team, the city and the fans. Let's see. I play football to score assists, but above all to win. It's more important to win and earn the team's trust. And he has been scoring and assisting a decent amount at Roma. And he's someone clearly wants to keep his options open. I'm sure if another Premier League team came to him, he'd entertain it. But being at Roma gives you the opportunity to play European football, to play in a fantastic city, to play for a big club. And also, like he said, to feel value, to feel an important player, to have the trust of the team. And maybe a bit of that is he wants to see, you know, Ozil has a year left on his deal, but he seems to be playing under, um, under Mikel Arteta. Can I try in the summer and go and do the same thing? It's up to him. Um, finally, people, Thierry Henry spoken about Arsenal. He said... Um, it was already difficult in relation to coming to Arsenal. He said, it was already difficult before Arsenal left. It was already difficult. I've learned by coming onto this side of things in coaching that there are things that I've heard that you might hear something from someone you know or I know and we might know things, but we actually don't know anything. Certainly not enough to speak about it. Since then, I've decided it's best not to get involved in these sort of things. Now, like an idiot, I've brought through the best, I've brought the wrong quotes, people. But he more or less, Thierry Henry spoke about managing Arsenal. And he more or less said, just because I want it doesn't mean it's going to happen. As you lot know, he's currently in Montreal Impact. And, you know, his, his chance, at least, chance of managing Arsenal for now, unless, until something happens with Arteta, seems a myth because Arteta's playing well, got youth on his side, got a decent contract. Um, so it is what it is in that regards. I don't think I have anything more to speak about, people, so I'm going to get out of here. But on that note, like I said, man, it's always a pleasure to speak to you lot, but I've got to keep it moving. People deluded on out.